Happy Camper Radio starts in three, two, one. one, one, one. Hello, my friends. Welcome back once again to another edition of Happy Camper Radio, the only place you need to be when you're ready to talk camping. Camping is what we're about. Camping is all we talk about. It's time to wind down 2015. This is our final show of the year. And the next couple weeks, I'm just going to kind of kick back and take it easy, get my batteries recharged, get my head together, start thinking about some great program opportunities for you in the upcoming year. I'm thinking back of 2015, some of the things I did, some of the uh, camping opportunities I had, some show ideas and what have you. And we're going to reflect back on some of those today. Gather everybody by the campfire. If you're uh, snug as a bug in a rug at home and you're not out camping and you're sitting by the fireplace and you're listening to the Happy Camper Radio Show on your home entertainment center, because we've made that so easy for you. If you're listening to us right now, chances are, It's going to be on your YouTube channel, and that's something we've added here over the past couple years, and a lot of people are beginning to use that. I love social media. I love being able to reach out in many different ways to bring this wonderful radio show to you. So sit back, enjoy yourself. It's going to be a great show today. Right now, I'm going to run over to the shout-out window because we've got some new folks we want to say hello to. Speaking of social media, we have Grant Brill of Elgin, Texas. He likes us on Facebook. Deborah Williams Tucker. P. Desmond Adams of Juniper, Florida. Adam Chandler of Denver, Colorado. They're following us on Twitter. And finally, Affordable RVing of Milwaukee, Oregon. Thank you all so very much, each and every one of you. Glad to have you aboard. And welcome to this great Happy Camper Radio family. Would you like to be on the program? I'd love to have you. Give me a shout. Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com, and we'll make that happen. Also, if you're a Google Plus member, Keep your ear open because in 2016, I'm going to be reaching out to many of you to see if you'd like to join me on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Although I like to sit down and talk a lot, and I love to run my mouth, and anytime I'm talking about anything that has to do with camping, I always love to have feedback. I always like to talk to folks, and I'd love to have you on the program, too. So if you don't have a Google Plus account, Go get one today. It's free of charge. Just make sure that you add Happy Camper Radio to your circles. We'll add you back and then start looking for updates on when you can be invited to join us here on the program in 2016. So keep that in mind, all right? Uh, Have you got your Christmas shopping done yet? I know a lot of people have, and I know a lot of people who have not. Just to give you an idea, yesterday morning... I had the pleasure of getting with some old friends of mine, some retirees from the sheriff's office. We get together once a year for a bite to eat. And if this is located at an area where there are a lot of shopping malls and I was driving up there and it was about 10 o'clock in the morning and there are malls to my left and malls to my right. And I'm thinking, wow, just about every parking spot is taken. No, not everybody has finished their Christmas shopping yet. But probably in the next couple days, just about everyone will, with the exception of some of those, of course, who have not done their shopping at all. And they will be out, chances are, on the 24th, all the way up until the last store closes. Yes, they call them procrastinators, but they're still in the holiday spirit. One thing I've got to say, though, this time of year when you're shopping, Whether you're doing your online shopping or you're in the malls, you're not experiencing a Black Friday shopping day. And those got to be the absolute worst. I don't know what happened over the years. I used to like to go out at midnight the day after Thanksgiving. I've only done it a couple times. But when I went out back then, it was the festive spirit of shopping. You were around a lot of people. There were no pushing. There were no shoving. Only a hand-selected few places were open. Others would open like 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. 
But these ones that would open at midnight, there was something about that festive spirit and being around people. There were no pushing. There were no shoving. There were no grabbing gifts out of people's hands and people going nuts. But today, some people still do that. And I think it's gotten too over commercialized. That's why, again, like I say, folks, a lot of people enjoy doing their shopping online, like myself, where you're avoiding those crowds. You're avoiding the trip to the mall. You're avoiding the fighting for a parking spot. You're not spending money on gas. You're spending it on your loved ones. And that's what holiday shopping online for me is all about. Now, if you haven't done your shopping online and you still want to do so, get this. There's still many great deals out there to be found. If you are looking for some camping supplies for the loved ones in your life, check out some of the places that we have on our homepage, www.happycamperradio.com. We signed up with affiliates over this past year with some really great companies. Check out their online specials. And keep this in mind, too. Any time that you make a purchase, you are going to help support this wonderful radio program. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. I enjoy coming back to you each and every week behind the microphone. I enjoy having a good time. I enjoy talking up camping. But this time of the year, if you're still going to be doing some shopping online, you will find some good deals available. As far as having your items delivered before Christmas, I hate to tell you this, it may be a little bit too late to have those items delivered to your doorstep on the 24th. In fact, just a couple days ago, I was checking through some of my emails, and I do have some companies that I do business with, both camping and non-camping related, and just about every one of them were giving me a deadline email saying, look, if you want to have your items bought and paid for and delivered on your doorstep by Christmas, here is the day you've got to do it. Here is the time it has to be done. I'm sure that you will find right about now it's going to be a little bit too late. But still, there's a lot of good deals out there, and several companies are still offering free delivery all the way through Christmas. How about that? So talk about a bargain. If you're not going to find them in the stores, you'll find them there online. Even though shopping in the stores is still kind of an old-fashioned thing, and I still like to do it because you see the items right there in front of you, and you can put your hands on them. You get the feel of them, and you can buy them right there. You can take them home. You can gift wrap them. I'm not saying one way is better than the other. I just have a preferred preference myself. But remember this, too, folks. Whatever you do, whenever you're out shopping this year, and you're looking around and you're buying this and you're buying that, remember to buy a gift for yourself. What's so wrong with treating yourself to something special this Christmas? No, you don't have to gift wrap it. You don't have to put it under the tree. But think about how hard you've worked all year long. You've paid bills. You've done this. You've done that. You've made sure this person was taken care of. You made sure that their basic needs were met. Every time that you went camping, you were the chief cook and bottle washer. You did everything. You paid for everything. Everybody always looked up to you, and you're a giving person. Reward yourself this year. Do something for your very self this Christmas. Buy yourself a gift. Chances are it's going to be something in a line of camping. Everybody needs something in camping. I don't care what it is. There may be a new product that came out. Maybe there's something that you've wanted for a very long time and haven't been able to buy it or haven't been able to afford it. Well, maybe this is the time of year that you go ahead and reward yourself with that wonderful gift you've been dreaming of for a very long time. So that's what Christmas is all about. It's all about the spirit of giving. And there's nothing wrong with giving to yourself. I've got to say that. Our phone number here at the Happy Camper Radio Show is 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, add us to Circles on Google+, and now subscribe to our YouTube channel. Last week, we had Gary Sizer in the studio. Do you remember him? The guy who wrote the book, Where's the Next Shelter? We have been talking to Gary off and on for about a year. We met Gary when he began his journey on the Appalachian Trail. He started here at Springer Mountain in Georgia, and five and a half months later of hiking and walking and stumbling over rocks and encountering wildlife and doing all kinds of things, uh, Gary finally made it to Mount Katahdin 
in Maine. Five and a half months of walking. What a journey that was. And he took notes along the way. He sat down after he returned home, and he wrote this book, which is now available on Amazon.com. You can pick up your copy today. It's Where's the Next Shelter? It's available in digital and paperback form, I believe. But anyway, in the months ahead, you're going to have an opportunity to hear Gary in his new audio book. And Gary was here at the Happy Camper Radio Studio for an entire week recording his new book. And he walked away with possession of all the audio files. And hopefully in the next month or so, he'll have that published. And you could purchase your audio version of Where's the Next Shelter? And it, too, will be available at Amazon.com. I've got to give Gary a lot of credit. I know he spent a lot of time in the sound booth, and for some crazy reason, this booth has been nicknamed the Booth of Justice. I I just can't wrap my arms around that. But Gary was referring, referring to the Booth of Justice as his home away from home, and that's exactly what it was for an entire week. He spent a lot of time in there, and it's got a very professional outfit on the inside, a very expensive professional microphone. The room is completely treated. And he was in there reading off a monitor. And I had a digital copy of his book. And, of course, I was navigating the pages through as he was reading. And I was also running the technical aspect of everything while he was inside the booth. Gary loved it. I enjoyed having him here. And I've got to say, I am blessed because I actually got to hear the first performance of Where's the Next Shelter in audio form because I was handling everything as he was reading it. Gary was really getting into it. It's a real good story that he tells. It's an audio version of the book that you will enjoy if you want to go out and purchase that. Keep an eye out for it. And of course, as Gary keeps us updated here on the program, I will make sure I pass that information on to you. Where's the next shelter available now in paperback and digital form, audio version coming up in the months ahead. Also, folks, this past week, I've got to say I've enjoyed a wonderful performance of Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Have you ever been to a Trans-Siberian Orchestra concert before? If you haven't, make sure you take one in next year, wherever you are. Go to their website. And make sure that you purchase your tickets early. I promise you it's a performance, a light and sound spectacular that you will not want to miss. This particular year, when I ordered my Trans-Siberian Orchestra tickets, and incidentally, folks, you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Happy Camper Radio. I posted some pictures of the concert this year, and they are really up close and really nice looking. Why so up close? Because this year we had front row section seating. It was a great performance all the way around, sold out, of course, as it is each and every year. And you may be camping, you may be a full-time camper. Most full-time campers do have computers, and they get online and they find out what attractions there are in the area 365 days a year. Regardless of where you're at, you chances are you're going to find a TSO concert coming to an area where you may be camped out at or where you may live. Get your tickets early. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. We went last year, had some great seats, but this year they couldn't have gotten any better. Trans-Siberian Orchestra, it's a wonderful concert, really pulls you into the Christmas spirit. And one of the things I like about TSO, folks, and I don't mean to be drifting off too far away from the world of camping, but let's also keep in mind, too, it is Christmas time. And we love the Christmas spirit. We love being in the Christmas spirit. So that's why I talk a lot about Christmas. Christmas and camping, yeah, they do go hand in hand. But one thing I really admire about the performers in TSO, first of all, they don't mind you taking pictures. They don't mind you taking videos. When was the last time you went to a concert and they're saying no cameras, no pictures, no this, no that, you know, and who wants that? You come there to enjoy. And yeah, anywhere you go, I don't care if it's camping. I don't care if it's a concert. You love to bring back memories. So, yes, they don't mind you taking pictures when you go to those concerts or take videos for that matter. And something else that I really admire about these guys after the concert is over, 
and you leave the auditorium or the, you know the arena wherever you're at and go out into the aisles if you're willing to hang out there for a while the band members will come out and greet their fans and you have an opportunity to have your picture taken with them and you have an opportunity to shake hands with them and talk to them for a little bit these are really outgoing people And it really gets me into the festive spirit anytime I go see one of their concerts. If you want to know what TSO is all about, check out some of their videos on YouTube. Trans-Siberian Orchestra, it's a great performance. Make sure you catch it in 2016. On today's show, folks, while we still have a little bit of time, I want to reflect back a little bit on some of the things we did in this particular year. And I want to look back, first of all, at some of the guests that we had on the show. You know, I love, like I said at the beginning of today's program, I love to have people call into the program, and I love to have people email me and say, hey, I'd like to be on your show to talk about what I do in the world of camping. And we did exactly that this year. In episode 90, we talked to a lady who refers to herself as the camper's wife. Her and her husband live on the road in a fifth wheel, and they talked to us a little bit about what it was like to live life on the road. You'd be surprised how happy some of these people really are. In episode 95, we talked to a gentleman by the name of Rich Denard. And I remember Rich. Rich was building his own custom RV. And what was so unique about Rich's project, he was building his RV on a boat trailer frame. How many people take that project on from start to finish? Rich did. Uh, He talked to us about acquiring the trailer and his envision of what he wanted to do. He had to go through some hoops and hurdles and everything to make it perfectly legal, and he did just that. It took some time to complete, but Rich finally finished his project, and yes, it looks very nice. Congratulations to you, Rich. I hope you have many, many happy years with your new custom-built RV. In episode 105, we talked to a gentleman by the name of Tim Raley. Now, what was so unique about Tim, I'll remember, is Tim went out of his way to come to the Happy Camper Radio Studios, and I got to sit down face-to-face with Tim. Now, here's Tim's situation. Tim was passing through the Atlanta area from Florida, where, incidentally, he is from. He was making a cross-country journey to take in the sights and sounds of wilderness, to see the outdoors, and he wanted to make it a point to come to Atlanta and visit us and be on the program here in the studio Tim is a true outdoorsman. He loves his reptiles. He loves his snakes. And, you know, Tim is probably out there to this very minute as I speak, taking in the sights and sounds of just about all 50 states. He had a car that was totally packed, head to toe, top to bottom. He was all set to go. And I'm glad Tim made the journey here to the metro Atlanta area and stopped by to talk with us here on Happy Camper Radio. A little later on, we had the opportunity of talking to Darren Kirby. Now, Darren Kirby in episode 119 was talking about pie iron recipes. He is the author of a wonderful book with dozens and dozens of delicious recipes. Do you know what a pie iron is? Look it up online if you do not. But anyway, if you've got your pie iron and you've got a campfire, all you need is the ingredients to make some absolutely wonderful wonderful meals. They're fun and creative to make, and you could prepare them right at camp. There's something in his book for everybody, young and old, all kind of great recipes. Nobody ever walks away from camp hungry when you've got a copy of Darren's book, Pie Iron Recipes, and your pie iron in hand. Great episode. I enjoyed talking with him. A week later, we spoke to Kimberly Travaglino. Now, Kimberly talked to us in episode 120 about her new book, how to hit the road. Kimberly and her family are also full-time campers, and she talked about what inspired her to hit the road and live on the road full-time. There were, of course, a lot of challenges. You know, if you've got family members uh, that are set in their ways, that enjoy having you stationary, enjoy having you come to your home each and every day, and now you're going to go ahead and break that tradition, sure, you're going to have some people that are going to be discouraging you and not giving you the positive influence that you need to take on the project of your dreams. Well, anyway, Kimberly talked with us at length in episode 120. She spoke about road schooling versus public school environments because she does road school her children. She has a family of six, and they're living in 350 square feet of space. Doesn't sound like much, 
but they're living their life to the fullest out on the road. So we had some wonderful folks this past year talk with us here on Happy Camper Radio, and I'd love to have you on the program in 2016. So definitely get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. Tell us what you do. Maybe you're building a new RV. Maybe you're living your life on the road. Maybe you have a full schedule ahead of you. You have a lot of different places you plan to go next summer or any time throughout the year. Let us know what your destination plans are. Let us know why you're choosing those areas, because there are a lot of campsites I've never even heard about before. But when I sit down and I have the opportunity to to talk to people, when I have people email the show and telling me about their their journey ahead and where they're going to be going and why they chose these locations, wow, I like to talk things like that up on the program and I'd love to have you here along with us. So keep that in mind. Again, my email, skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com, or you can leave me a voicemail at 404-537-CAMP. Also in 2015, there was one episode that I, I do want to touch on here. We have a lot of places that we reach out to throughout the year as far as getting our podcast to you. And one of our media providers is a company by the name of Stitcher. Now, we sign up with Stitcher at the very early stages of Happy Camper Radio three years ago. And we are proud to be a part of them. Anyway, they got in touch with us here at the show after hearing episode 91. And that particular episode, we talked about emergency roadside assistance. Now, we covered a lot of information in emergency roadside assistance, trying to explain to people the things that you should do and some of the things you shouldn't do in the event you have an emergency at the side of the road. Say you're heading up to a, a campground, which is maybe three or four hours away, and you break down. It's very important for everybody to have AAA, to have some sort of a program that you can reach out to where you can get your vehicle towed. Maybe if you're going to be down or out for a couple of days, maybe you, the insurance in your program will provide you uh, emergency housing. We don't ever want these things to happen, folks, but let's keep in mind, chances are somewhere along the line, something is going to happen when we least expect it. And we talked up emergency roadside assistance in episode 91. Our friends over at Stitcher picked up on this, and they contacted me and asked me if they could use a segment of episode 91 as part of their off-road series. My hat's off to the folks at Stitcher. I thank you so very, very much for, for all you've done for us and all the programs that we offer here as part of Happy Camper Radio to make sure that each and every one of our listeners are safe when they go camping and when they're out and about. You folks over there are great. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to letting us use your service to get our message out. Also, episode 118. This one was also very special to me. We talked about the Great American Camp Out 2015. Now, I build this up tremendously each and every year, and I take part in it. If you're not familiar with the Great American Campout, go to the National Wildlife Federation's website and read all about it. And what it's very simply is, it is a program designed to get youngsters into the world of outdoors, having them put down their electronic devices, even if for one day, that's all you've got to do. But get out there and get accustomed to wilderness. And they have a program that we participated in this year. All I had to do, all anybody had to do for that matter, is make a commitment to go camping. This year, there was a window of opportunity. I believe it was from like June through September, something like that. I'd have to go back and look at the dates to be more precise. But anyway, all you had to do was make a commitment to go camping just one day, anytime within a two to three month period. That was it. And you get your kids out there, you get them associated with wildlife, and their national sponsors take $1 from every person who pledges to go camping, and they donate that money to benefit wildlife. And this year, I think they far exceeded their goal. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful what they're doing. I'm sure the Great American Camp Out 2016 is going to be well put together, too. 
And in fact, I did reach out to some of the local folks here in the metro Atlanta area that held some group camps. And hopefully they're going to get in touch with me ahead of time next year and let me know when they're planning their great American camp out because I plan to go ahead and take the road show out to their destination and do Happy Camper Radio on location with the folks who are going to be camping. Maybe if you live in this area and you'd like to join us, keep in tune to our upcoming episodes in 2016, and we'll definitely talk about that. But again, for more information about the National Wildlife Federation and the Great American Camp Out, uh, go to their website, nwf.org. This past year, I camped out at Georgia Stone Mountain Park with my niece. She had her son there, and we just had an absolute wonderful time. I did my radio show from over there, too. And it was a great opportunity, a great weekend to get away, and the weather was absolutely picture perfect. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. It's year-round camping time. I love the places that invite you to go to their destination any time of the year seven days a week, 365 days a year. And this week, we are going to visit a place in South Carolina called Buck Hall Recreation Area. It's part of Francis Marion and Sumter National Forest, and it's run by the U.S. Forest Services. This area is primarily used for shrimp baiting and fishing. If you're an angler, you definitely want to bring your pole along. Make sure you get your fishing license if you live in South Carolina or go online to find out what you need to get an out-of-state license. Don't get yourself in any trouble with the law. But anglers can expect a huge variety of fish, including bass, flounder, sea trout, snapper, mackerel, swordfish, crab, shrimp, clams, oysters. Wow! Do you love seafood? There you go. This campground provides access to boating and ocean sailing. Fishing boats can often be seen, and large pleasure boats can be seen as they travel from the popular intracoastal waterway. What a sight to see if you're a person like myself who just loves to sit by the fire. Don't get out and do very much. If you've got a great ocean view, this is a great campground for you. Tent and RV camping. Full hookups are also available. Each side is equipped with a table, lantern post, campfire ring, and a grill. Take a look at some of their activities and amenities on their website. Wildlife viewing, showers, parking area, a campground host, hiking, biking, boat ramps, crabbing, drinking water. The list goes on and on. Also, some things to know before you go. Additional fees will be collected for extra vehicles when parking areas are full. Also, remember, don'tmovefirewood.org. Check out that information on their website. Keep those tree-killing pests away by burning your firewood and purchasing it locally. All the information can be found right there at happycamperradio.com. But if you're looking for a great camping destination this time of year, year-round for that matter, consider Buck Hall Recreation Area in South Carolina. It is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. And if you have a campground that you would like for us to feature on the program, by all means, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. Make sure you include a link to the campground website. Well, folks, that's about going to wrap it up for this edition of Happy Camper Radio and this edition of Happy Camper Radio 2015. I'm going to take a short break right now and come back to you at the start of the new year with all kinds of great new ideas and new things to talk about in the world of camping. Looking forward to having you join me, and I'm looking forward to an exciting new year. Don't forget, folks, every pet deserves a loving home. Do like I did. Visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. You can catch us online anytime at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to Circles on Google+. And now subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And no doubt about it, my friends, we are going to make a happy camper out of you. Catch you in 2016. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.